Welcome to Night Hacking at the JFocus Conference. My name's Stephen Chin. I'm the Java Community Manager, and I'm joined by Kate Stanley. How yeah. are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Are you enjoying the conference so far? Yeah, no, this is, this is one of my favorite conferences, so I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a regular. This is my first time at JFocus, and so oh. far I'm really impressed, so definitely going to want to try and come back next year, <laughs> if I can. Yeah, no, I, I, I recommend it. Um, another, another, another good conference that guy over there runs. Oh, so yeah. if you want to go to Oslo, chat with, um, chat with that guy. OK, I'll bear that in mind. Um, yeah, so we're going to chat a little bit about microservices. Yeah, so um, I'm giving a talk later on today. It's the last talk of, today, of the day just before the party. Um, and I'm going to be talking about testing microservices and kind of what that means in comparison to doing monolithic applications and the kind of changes you might have to make and the things you have to consider. Because I think often people kind of think about testing as something they can do later or worry about later. They're focused on getting it to work yeah. rather than focused on getting tests for if it breaks. So I feel like it's an area, particularly in the microservices, that yeah, people have Yeah, so you don't think they've, they've quite got the testing discipline no, I, down quite I as think much. there's, yeah, I've seen loads of talks here at JFocus about microservices. But, but, but none in testing. Yeah, I think I'm the only one, so. So what, what are some of like, the unique challenges for testing microservices that differ when you have a big monolithic application? Well, I guess the main difference is because now you've got all of your pieces separately rather than one big application, you have to really think about the boundaries between those pieces and how yeah. you make sure that if one goes down, then you know about that and you can test for the fact that if you change one piece, then all the other pieces are still going to work. And it's about that kind of collaboration, I guess. OK, so you're testing the microservices in isolation, trying to make sure that the protocols or whatever you've agreed upon yeah. actually works properly. What sort of tools would you use for testing microservices? The same? Yeah, there are potentially some other tools you might want to consider using more or less. So you might find you use more mocking and things like Mokito to yeah. mock out um, classes. But, but those in general, are a good you can practice use, anyway. Yeah, I think in general, you can use the same tools. It's how you approach the use of those tools and how many tests you do in the different areas that's perhaps the biggest difference. OK. And like from successful projects you've been, any idea like, like how do you measure success or like what sort of things would you want to be doing to have better testing within your team or any general advice? Um, I'm quite keen on doing test-driven development. Yeah. So writing your tests first and then writing your application code to fulfill those tests. Because I think it's kind of only by writing them that way around that you really know that your tests are passing for the right reasons, not just because you've written them I, cleverly. My, my favorite type of test is the one which um, calls different methods in the APIs and then never asserts anything and then yeah. succeeds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's quite easy, I think, if you write your test later to kind of say, oh, well, you've got, got loads of tests. It's fine. But it's yeah. not until you can show that if you change the code, the tests really do break that you show you really are testing properly. Yeah, you can always fake it if you don't actually test the test yeah. by making it fail. Yeah, I think that's why I'm quite keen on test-driven development. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, do, I was an course. extreme programming guy back in the early Agile guys. So test-driven yeah. development and pair programming. And yeah. we even did the card thing with Ron Jeffries. Oh, yeah, it was lots of fun. Planning poker, that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that, but I've, I know of other teams that do that. <laughs> so. Cool. So something else we wanted to chat a little bit about is you're doing um, a little bit of outreach yeah. for girls in technology. Yeah, so um, I work out in the UK with IBM, and we have quite a lot of schemes to get children from the local schools in and teach them a bit of programming and tell them about what we do. Um, the particular scheme that I'm running is centered around bringing girls in. Because mm -hmm. we find that although we do get girls coming to our other schemes, often it's majority of boys. And we want to give the girls an opportunity to not only you know, have an interest and see what it's all about, but meet other girls who are interested in the same things. So yeah. we also try and get a lot of women IBMers to come down and meet them and tell them about their journey. Yeah, so show them like role models yeah. of successful women in technology. And what, what, like, what age group do you? They're year eight girls, so that's about 10, 11, I think. OK, yeah, so that's close to the age. So I was mentioning we did um, 
kids' workshops here on Sunday. Yeah. And the target age range was like 10 to 14. Yeah. About. I, I think getting to talk to them before they make their choices in terms of like subjects is quite good because it means that they perhaps are a bit more open to subjects that are more male dominated in general. Like I found in my maths, when I did maths at A level, there was three girls and like 15, 16 boys. So I think leaving, showing them they can choose that option, it is an option. Yeah, no, I, and I think if you just at leave it up to the parents or the teachers, yeah. they'll, they'll naturally, unfortunately, do a little bit of stereotyping in terms of like what they, what yeah. they steer children towards based on their conception of um, professions. Yeah, if you've got parents, and particularly if your mother or you have an auntie or something that's in technology, then maybe you'd look at it differently. But yeah, if your parents haven't really been exposed to that, then they might say, oh, you know, this is the kind of role that I've seen other women go into, so you should consider this. So it's just opening their eyes a bit and showing them the whole range of possibilities there are in technology for everyone. And what do you, what do, you do with the, the girls? Um... So they come up with ideas. We give them a problem to solve, like, uh, how could you help your grandparents to use technology? Okay. And they come up with inventive solutions based around technology to, to, to solve those kind problems. Of solve the problem, yeah. do a little bit of brainstorming, creative work. Yeah, we get the design team in and they do some design oh. thinking with them, which is a <laughs> big thing with an IBM. And That's uh, cool. they get all their um, color pe pens and paper out. And then at the end of the two days, we have an exposition where they um, show off all their work and everyone within the lab can come and have a look and they try and sort of sell their ideas to the other IBMers and then we have a, a winner at the end. They get a prize. Oh, that's nice. So it's a little competition but probably more friendly. Yeah. Trying to get people to think out of the box and think about technology problems. Yeah, and it, it's just really a good opportunity for them to gain confidence in talking about their ideas and stuff as well. Yeah, so. that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's all really exciting stuff. Um, looking forward to your talk later today on microservices and testing. Yeah, hopefully it'll be interesting. Yeah, and hopefully you have any other plans for your time here in Stockholm? So I'm unfortunately having to leave tomorrow afternoon, so I'm going to yeah. check out as much of the conference as I can tomorrow before I go. But, but basically in and out yeah, for the I'm conference. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to come back at some point come, and check out come more back, Stockholm. Come though. back during the summer, I would yeah, recommend. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, thanks very much, Kate. Yeah, thank Appreciate you for having me. Appreciate the interview. Yeah. yeah. And enjoy. So you guys can watch the, the rest of the interviews, including this one at nighthacking.com. And we have two more interviews lined up for today, another at the break, and then finally a VJUG Java EE book reading session to close out the day, um, and then a few more interviews tomorrow. So thank you all for, for watching. Cheers.